Hello, welcome back to the woods. And this video is specially for the viewer who commented, surely a bloke like you doesn't walk around the woods carrying a basket like this. Well, I do, and in this video, I'm gonna. Now, for those of you who are regulars to the channel, you will know that my last video was all about how to make a foraging basket. And in this video, we're gonna take it out and put it to good use. And what we're looking for in this one is, well, it's, it's a great favorite. It's just poking through uh, around where I live and it's ramsons, wild garlic. And what I wanna do is, is gather a load of that to use uh, in a recipe that you can use at home anytime you like, or you can even take it away and use it around the campfire. Now, in this video, we are gonna be out harvesting ramsons and they have a relatively short season. Around where I live, they're just starting to poke through now. So I thought I'd get out there and gather them up. And the recipe I'm gonna do, we're gonna make a pesto out of them. What that does is it means I can extend the time that I'll keep them because you blitz them up into a pesto, you can then store them in jars in the fridge. And it's a great way of taking that taste of springtime and extending it on through into the, the rest of the year. So it's a great, great little uh, um, method that you can do uh, and a good way of preserving that, that taste of springtime. Now obviously we need to think a little bit about sustainability. So when we gather them, I always cut mine. I don't just pull them up. Because if you start pulling the plant up, well they're not gonna be there next year and that would be a great, great shame. So take that little bit of time, that little bit of care. So I say always, I always just trim mine off as I go. Now, a couple of things to be aware of. Obviously, with foraging, we should only pick what we can positively identify. And there's a couple of other species that grow at this time of year that you should be aware of. That can look, well, certainly the first one can look a little bit similar. And the first one is bog arum or lords and ladies, which is poisonous. It's got quite a shiny leaf though. It's got uh, a point on one end and then two spurs at the rear. And it's also got these giveaway black dots on it. It also tends not to grow in great big clumps like ramsons do. Instead, it tends to grow as individual plants. So watch out for that one. The other one, well, the other one can grow in with um, our ramsons, and that's a plant called dog's mercury, again, which is toxic. And as I said, it can spring up in between the ramsons, so a little bit of care as you're gathering it, and always, before you process it, go through and double check, but a little bit more of that later on. Now, once you've gathered those ramsons, take them home. And the first thing I do with them is I give them all a, a wash. And what I tend to do is I fill the sink up and then I'll dump them all in rather than just putting them in a colander and wash them straight in the colander. And the reason for that is I want to, A, sift through to make sure that I haven't got any of that dog's mercury or anything else that I don't want in there. But also things like snails, etc. if you put it into a, a bath of water, they all drop out and sink to the bottom. The, the wild garlic will just float on the top and you can just fish it out. And as I say, it also gives you a chance just to check it through to make sure that there's nothing nasty lurking in there. Now, 
Now, once you've washed those off, you're gonna give those a little dry off. With that done, you're then gonna gather the rest of your ingredients. Now, I've worked it out on about 100 grams. So 100 grams of ranzman leaves, 100 grams of hard cheese or Parmesan, 100 grams of, well, you could use pine nuts, I prefer to use blanched hazelnuts uh, and they tend to be a little bit cheaper and I think they taste better. To that, you're gonna want 200 milliliters of olive oil. I'm using a mix of olive oil and rapeseed oil. A, because it keeps the cost down and B, actually, I don't mind the flavor of it. I think it's pretty good. And then the last thing you mustn't forget, you're also going to need a few jars to put your pesto in. So making it is simplicity itself. All you need is a food processor and you put your 100 grams of rancid and leaves, your 100 grams of nuts, your 100 grams of parmesan and your 200 milliliters of <clears throat> olive oil into the food processor. Give it a, a good measure of salt and pepper onto that as well. Put the lid on, turn it on, and you give it about 30 seconds, that's all it needs. If you want something that's finer, then leave it on for a little bit longer, but I prefer mine a little bit rustic. It makes it look a little bit more interesting, it's less of a, a green sludge. And there it is, good to go. All stored away in my jar and that'll go in the fridge and that'll keep for months. And it's great. It takes, well, seconds to make, you've just seen that. Um, a little bit of time to gather the, the, the ingredients, but what you end up with is something absolutely superb. So get out there, give it a go. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then remember to hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel. Down below in the description box, you'll find links to my social media. So Instagram, Facebook, pop over there, give me a follow. And also while you're over there, have a look at my Etsy shop over there. You'll find the Green Craft patch. And there's a few other pieces that come up on there from time to time. So keep your eyes on the shop. Now, I've got a few other videos in the pipeline at the moment. I've got a couple of knife ones. I know you lot love a knife video, so I've got a couple of different knife ones. Uh, and there's a couple of other making projects things as well. So keep your eyes on the channel. Look out for the updates of when I'm posting new stuff. And uh, yeah, anyway, I've been Neil. And until next time, stay safe in the woods.